Hi, my name is Harper West and I'm a clinical psychologist and I have a question for you today. What emotion is the most damaging for relationships? Now certainly you could argue that it's anger and the conflicts and bickering and even violence that sometimes erupt in relationships is not healthy. But I would suggest that shame is actually the problem. Embarrassment and humiliation are often connected to feelings of rejection, unworthiness, and feeling unloved. Shame is what we call a primary emotion. It's often lurking underneath anger and violence, and it provokes us into anger. I actually like the saying, anger is shame's bodyguard, because it indicates that there's a self-protective or defensiveness to anger, especially in relationships. We use this anger to keep others at, at a distance, usually to help to prevent us being seen as flawed or shameful or unworthy in some way. This idea is really powerful for me because I believe that shame is a very essential driver of most human behavior, especially in relationships. And we certainly need to learn to accept our own shame and tolerate our own shame and this self-acceptance can be very healthy for our, ourselves and our own relationship with ourself, but shame tolerance in a, in a, is also essential for healthy relationships. And that's where I really like to see this, this issue move forward and help us to understand that shame affects relationships. And we know that shame is a pro-social emotion, uh, meaning that it, it helps us stay in relationships and we've, we believe there's a strong evolutionary component to this that when we're ashamed when we when we did something wrong we we know that we need to resolve that with our with our tribe with our relationships and and fix that through apologizing and and changing our behavior and in this way shame can seem kind of distancing but also reconnecting us to others when we feel shame, we may, you know, put our heads down and want to sink into the floor and feel we want to disconnect from others. But when it's well tolerated, shame in those with healthy self-acceptance teaches us that when we feel guilt or embarrassment, that this is a signal, this is an emotional signal that we should reconcile with others and we should be contrite and apologetic. And in this way, shame is a pro-social emotion that's designed to strengthen our relationships and our connections with others. Basically, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all flawed human beings. We need to have that signal of shame or embarrassment to tell us that we did make a mistake and to urge us to fix that mistake with our, with our partners. Yet, this is the paradox, is that shame also can lead to difficulty in relationships and disconnection. Just as love is a connecting emotion, um, unhealthy levels of shame or poor shame tolerance can lead to distance and disconnection in relationships. So how does that happen? As a psychotherapist, I see the effects of poor shame tolerance every day in relationships, whether they're couples therapy or individual therapy. And I spend a lot of time talking about what I call are the three blame shifting strategies. And all three of these blame shifting strategies are an attempt to hide what we think are flaws or imperfections or failures on our part. But doing these strategies builds emotional walls and distance in relationships. So there are, there's a lot more information on my website about the blame shifting strategies and that website is, is harperwest.co. But very briefly, the three strategies are blame, um, blame avoidance, which is just trying to set up relationships or scenarios where, where no one's to blame, everyone's, everyone's good here. Self-blamers tend to, obviously, as the name suggests, take on a lot of blame. These are kind of the people pleasers or the enablers, the conflict avoiders, who tend to just criticize themselves and have a hard time criticizing others. The third category is other blamers, which as the name also indicates, they tend to offload blame and shame to others as a way to, to, to tolerate their shame. They, they shift it to others. I believe that it's essential that we identify our own blame shifting strategies and also accurately identify those of our partners or potential partners because it says a lot about how that relationship is going to proceed and, and the patterns that are going to ensue. So the character flaws of other blamers are the most obvious cause of turmoil in relationships, especially primary relationships and family relationships. 
Other blamers have at their core a difficulty um, handling shame that, that shows up as a fear of criticism and a lack of accountability. And these are really key in understanding how this damages relationships. Because again, we're all going to make mistakes. We all need to hear criticism from our partner and then reconcile that and, and, and be accountable and apologize. But other blamers have a great deal of difficulty with those, with those actions. They tend to shift the blame to some degree to their partner using lies or justifications or gaslighting techniques, a, a wide range of, of things escalating even up to verbal and physical abuse. Through their combativeness and accusations, other blamers tend to teach their partner to pull away um, because often this partner is someone who, who is uncomfortable with conflict to begin with. And then if there's escalating or continual chronic conflict, that's going to be very difficult to overcome for the relationship. And even those with very mild other blaming tendencies fear intimacy because with intimacy comes honest criticism, perhaps, and a need for accountability. Again, these are very threatening to their tender, insecure psyches. And this triggers the fear response, leading to hypervigilance and hypersensitivity to criticism, overreaction to blame and shame, and again, in even severe cases, rage or violence. The passiveness that is a common trait of other, excuse me, self-blamers and blame avoiders exacerbates the behavior of the other blamers. Their lack of assertiveness and their sort of enabling behaviors tend to make the behavior of other blamers worse by, by allowing it to continue. Um, Self-blamers have good intentions often. They, they want to reduce conflict or avoid conflict, but this tends to placate the other blamers and, and escalates their unhealthy blame-shifting behaviors. So again, these three blame-shifting strategies make sense on an individual level. Um, they're very self-protective and adaptive skills that were learned in childhood, but they're very harmful for adult relationships. What may alleviate the pain of shame for one person causes a couple to struggle. They're going to struggle to connect emotionally to get the love and reassurance that they both naturally want. So I spend quite a bit of time talking about these blame shifting strategies in therapy and how they harm relationships. And of course, we can see that other blamers can't take criticism. They tend to lash out at others in blame shifting over maybe even very minor disagreements. And this can lead to a cycle of blame and defend that's unhealthy or the self blamer or the blame avoider on the other side of the, the equation may just give up and tire of being the, the, the source of this blame and the, the, the blame shifting and they may just check out of the relationship and they're just going to say, ah, who cares? And this, this checking out or shutting down or withdrawing in relationships is obviously going to lead to an unhealthy distance and disconnection that feels difficult for most people to handle. Um, certainly we can look at the inability to apologize is a very difficult thing for relationships. We all need to acknowledge our faults and our acknowledge our imperfections and own them in a healthy way. This also helps us show up as authentic and real in relationships. The partner who hears this real authentic acknowledgement of a failure or of shame can then lower his or her barriers to connection and may also then open up and be fully present and real with his or her own fears and vulnerabilities can lead to a mutual healthy um, vulnerability. Because on the other end of that spectrum, the unhealthy part of that is if there's a continual lack of authentic emotional experiences that bond a couple together, they just drift apart physically, psychologically, and the relationship dies a slow death. So a lot of people want to know, how do I spot an other blamer? How do I spot these people early in relationships? Certainly I would recommend you familiarize yourself with many of the common traits that I list on my website um, about other blamers. These are similar traits that are listed on other websites for narcissists or sociopaths. They have the same core inability to handle shame and a tendency to, to lack accountability. So 
if you can spot those characteristics, that's a great way to start. But I have a real simple tip here, and that is when you are starting to date someone or you meet somebody, the simplest way to test if they're an other blamer is to criticize them. Challenge them, disagree with them, question something they decided about. It can be very, very small. Challenge them in this way and see what happens. Can they gracefully handle this disagreement? Can they admit being wrong? Can they compromise in any way? And if they don't, watch what happens. Do they become defensive? Do they begin to shift blame and justify their behaviors with excuses? If this happens, you can see that this is a small little test, but it may indicate that they lack accountability, and that may be a challenge in future bigger conflicts in the relationship. So all of these ideas are part of a concept that I developed called self-acceptance psychology. And this is based on this idea of poor shame tolerance being the core of a lot of unhealthy behaviors, everything from depression and anxiety to relationship conflicts, as I've discussed here. It's, an, it's essential, as I mentioned, to identify your own blame shifting patterns, but also those of your partner or your potential partner. Because until we acknowledge the role that blame shifting has in relationships, we're going to struggle to understand what keeps going wrong in this relationship. And this idea of identifying your blame shifting patterns and that those of your partner is essential to figuring this out. Again, lots more information at harperwest.co. Um, I'm also on social media. Check me out on Facebook at Harper West Psychologist and Author. And um, appreciate you listening today, watching this video. And understand overall that the idea of self-acceptance, self-acceptance is so important to understanding ourselves, moving towards a healthy shame tolerance for ourselves, which then helps our relationships. You can learn a lot more about self-acceptance as well by signing up for my email list on the website, and you'll get a free handout on how to develop self-acceptance. So in closing, have a great day and be kind to yourself. Thanks.